Hello, welcome to another video. Welcome to April's TBR Pursuit. It's that time of month again. It's come around super quick. But uh, yeah, it's time to play the game. If you are unfamiliar with TBR Pursuit, it is my TBR board game based off Trivial Pursuit. Each colour correlates to a genre and there is a deck of question cards. We pull a card, we fill a pie, we pick my TBR for the month. I will leave a link to the playlist of all rounds of TBR Pursuit so far down below if you would like to familiarise yourself with the game and how it works. But there we go. I'm excited. I am ready for a new TBR. I'm not going to hold this board up the whole time because that's unnecessary. I am so ready for a new TBR. I did complete March's TBR. Um, the only thing I currently haven't finished is Truth Witch, but that wasn't actually in TBR Pursuit. It was just an extra that I needed to get read in the month. And there's still three days left of the month and I anticipate finishing it, so that's fine. But all of the books for TBR Pursuit for last month I did manage to complete, which means no punishments this time round. I also actually managed to read a lot more as well. I say complete, I did actually DNF the Peculiars, but I did read half of it and have actively chosen to DNF, so that is fine. Um, because my punishment is always to pick a book from the previous month that I didn't read, and else that's an active DNF, I'm not going to do that. Now, there are a few things that I do need to get to in April. Um, there is the Elder Ling Along book. Elder Ling Along is coming back. We're heading into phase two. Um, we're starting the Tawny Man trilogy, um, which starts with the Fool's Errand. Yes, the Fool's Errand. Um, so I need to get that in there. Of course, Middle Grade Monthly. Um, we've got the Witcher's Boy that I need to get in there. Um, and if I can get the Read Rate Review pick in there, that would be great as well. That's Fireheart Tiger. Um, I don't own a physical copy. I'll probably read that one on ebook, but it's really short anyway. So if I don't get it in there, that's probably okay. But I think that's pretty much everything. There's, there's no like prompt fulfilling readathons happening in April that I'm doing. Um, Raidathon is in April, which is my 24 hour readathon. If you didn't know that that's coming up, that's coming up on the 3rd of April, the full 24 hours of the 3rd of April. Um, it's Raidathon, but there are no prompts for that, so you just read whatever you want for 24 hours. Otherwise, I think think I'm all good. Yeah, should be fine. Um, in terms of orange, I have Maddie on reserve for my orange this month. Maddie from Book Rising Blog, I will leave a link to her down below. So if we land on an orange, Maddie will be called upon. So we'll see if that happens. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all I have in terms of an introduction for today. Let's just get on with the rolls. Cue roll number one. Roll number one. Three. Um, I usually start with a middle grade and nothing about that is changing. One, two, three. Green middle grade. And we have... Can you find a title with three or less words? I indeed can do that, yes. And a little green pie in there. Roll number one. I went for a middle grade, I always do. And we have Can you find a title with three or less words? And this works so perfectly for... The Witcher's Boy by Kelly Barnhill, which is the middle grade monthly pick for the month of April. So I can immediately get this on here and the relief. <laughs> um, I don't actually know too much about this one. I suggested it for middle grade monthly on the basis that I loved The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. One of my favourite middle grades. It's just really touched my heart, that one. Um, and I love it so very much. So when I found out that this one was a thing, I wanted to read it and thought it would be a good choice for Middle Grade Monthly. What I found out just the other day is that this was actually released in the States in 2014, but it was only released in the UK in 2020. So I thought that this was new. Turns out it's not. It's actually quite old. I don't know how old The Girl Who Drank the Moon is, so I don't know if this was written before that, um, but it was only released in the UK last year, which surprised me. But this is about a young boy called Ned who lives with his mother, Sister Witch, the village keeper of an ancient store of magic. It's an unruly magic that only she can tame until the bandit king comes to steal the magic and it bolts out of its pot into the wide world beyond. Thrown into a wild adventure, Ned must venture to the enchanted forest that borders his village where he meets Ayn, the bandit king's daughter can she help him find his voice and a way to speak to the magic a word after all is a kind of magic words call the world into being that is power indeed and ned is not yet a powerful boy already gives me those vibes of the girl who drank the moon which i 
absolutely adored. I think I'm gonna fall in love with this. I love the writing style of Kelly Barnhill from what I've read from her before and I just, I get all the fuzzy vibes from this already. I'm super excited to read it and I'm really excited for everyone else to read it for Middle Grade Monthly as well. So if you want to be in on that, grab yourself a copy of The Witcher's Boy um, and our live show for that will be towards the end of April. Roll number two. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Purple adult fantasy. One, two, three, four, five. Or orange other. I have Maddie on reserve for orange. So whilst we have the opportunity, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see what Maddie has to do for me. Maddie. Can you name one of your favourite books? This is a good opportunity for her. <laughs> so a little orange pie in there. Okay, roll number two. We have an orange. We will be calling Maddie. Um, and Maddie's prompt is, can you name one of your favourites? Now, I want to make some predictions here. Um, I predict that she's going to go for Once and Future Witches because I haven't read that yet. Otherwise, her favourites, I'm thinking like Strange the Dreamer, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but I've already read them, so I don't think she will pick them. But I really think she'll go for Once in Future Witches. That's my prediction. We'll see what she says. Let's give her a call. Hi, how you doing? Hello, I do good. You have literally caught me at the perfect time. I've just, oh, I say I've just turned my camera off. It's still recording, <laughs> but I've just finished filming. <laughs> Hurrah, okay. Good, good job. Perfect timing. Are you ready for this? I'm nervous, but I have a prediction. I'm not sure I am, but we're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> this is a good, this is good for you. I, I'm nervous, right. Okay. Maddie, can you name me one of your favourite books? <laughs> I have an idea that it's quite chunky and I'm not sure if you've read it yet. Have you, have you read the Once and Future Witches? Yeah, I literally said it? before I called you, I bet she'll say Once and Future Witches. <laughs> I'm really unpredictable. I don't try and hide it. I I own it and I haven't yet read it. Do you mind? It's 500 no, pages. No, I, really I completely sorry. predicted it. I literally yeah. said about a minute before, I said she'll go for Once and Future Witches because she knows that I've already read Strange the Dreamer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's the logic. I'm making really yeah. strange children. That's, that's longer, so this is better. Yeah, okay, let me just grab that. Oh god, it is chunky. It is a chunky it's, one. It's 500. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's it's really like gripping, so you'll you'll race through it when you get into it, assuming you like it. Hopefully I really like. did like um what's what's our other one? Uh, the Ten Thousand Brews of January. Of yeah, I loved okay. that. So I think you'll the writing style well. is something I'm going to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, because this okay. is a bit less lyrical and a bit more fantasy, so you'll probably like it if you like Ten Thousand Doors. I did. I'm excited. I am excited. Okay. Totally I'm saw so it coming, sorry. but <laughs> good so sorry. So good. No, this is good. This is this is good. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. I am excited. I will let you get back to filming, editing, and your productive day. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for letting me make you read this book. <laughs> yeah, I knew you would like the prompt. I I knew it. <laughs> All right. I will speak to you later. Sorry. Bye. Bye. We saw it coming. It's literally her favourite book. She goes on about it all the time. Um, I did enjoy The Ten Thousand Doors of January by Alexi e. Harrow. Um, I liked the writing style. I therefore think that I will like this. It isn't little, but it's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> Um, do I know what this is about? In 1893, there's no such thing as witches. There used to be in the wild, dark days before the burnings began, but now witching is nothing but tidy charms and nursery rhymes. If the modern woman wants any measure of power, she must find it in a ballot box. But when the Eastwood sisters, James, Juniper, Agnes, Amaranth, and Beatrice Belladonna join the suffragists of New Salem, they begin to pursue the forgotten words and ways that might turn the women's movement into the witches' movement. Stalked by shadows and sickness, haunted by forces that will not suffer a witch to vote, and perhaps not even to live, the sisters will need to delve into the oldest magics, draw new alliances, and heal the bond between them if they want to survive. There's no such thing as witches, but there will be. I'm excited! I know that Maddie loves this one, and I really think that I'm going to enjoy it, so although it's not little, um, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. So, there we go. God, it's a chunky one, though. <laughs> Alright, roll number three. Three. One, two, three. 
Purple adult or one, two, three, roll again. You know what? Let's go for the adult. One, two, three. Purple adult fantasy. And that is a book under 500 pages. You know what? I like that one. <laughs> there is a purple pie in there. Roll number three, we got an adult fantasy, and can you name a book under 500 pages? Now, this is difficult. Like, when it comes up, I get excited because less than 500 pages means a smaller book. But, <laughs> it's difficult to find an adult fantasy under 500 pages. However, the read rate review pick um, Fireheart Tiger, I cannot remember who that's written by right now. I will put a picture up here. Um, Fireheart Tiger is an adult fantasy that is only like a hundred pages. It's a novella, but it counts. Um, it's definitely under 500 pages. It's definitely an adult fantasy. I need to read it for read, rate, review. I'm excited. Um, I do not know much about this one. I just remember that when AJ pitched it for read, rate, review, I was like, that sounds really cool. I would like to get rid of my nomination and just vote for his. And I did then vote for his pick rather than my own <laughs> for read, rate, review, um, because I was really interested by how he summarised it. But I cannot remember that now. I just know that I'm interested in it. I think it's like romantic, political, and inspired by, is it like Vietnamese culture? I think? Um, but I'm really excited to read it because it sounded really good from how AJ pitched it. So there we go. Um, and it's only 100 pages, so it should be super quick to get through as well. So that one actually turned out okay. Roll number four. Two. Roll again or roll again? Well, I guess we'll roll again. Two. Purple adult fantasy or blue blank? Let's go for a blue blank. We haven't had a blue yet. And we have a wild card. Oh, hell yeah. That's always fun. Okay. And a blue pie in there. Roll number four. We went for blue blank and we got a wild card. We love a wild card because it means I can put anything in there. Whatever. Don't need to have any rules. It does still have to be like a book on a TBR and I still have to read it so it's not like a mood read pick. Um, but wild card. And for this month's wild card I'm going with The Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Tawny Man trilogy which we are starting Elderling Phase 2 for. This is the third trilogy in the series um, and we're going back to following Fitz and The Fool. Uh, we're going back to that group of characters, I believe. But I do not want to read the blurb because the blurb of these editions tend to be full of spoilers and I don't want to do that. I don't want to subject you to that. I don't want to subject me to that. So we're not going to read the blurb. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to wait for me to have read this to be able to regurgitate a spoiler-free summary for you because currently I don't have one. Um, but I have been loving the Elderling series. I loved the... Farseer trilogy, which follows Fitz. Um, to start with, he is the bastard son of a prince, um, who is the king-in-waiting. When the king-in-waiting finds out about his bastard son, he abdicates the throne. Um, Fitz is then kind of raised by the stable hand and partially the king, who uses his unique political position as royalty and a commoner to train him up as an assassin. There is so much depth to this world. We're learning so much as we go. We've then read the Live Ship Traders trilogy, which follows ships where after three generations of a family have died on its deck, it quickens and becomes a live ship and it is then a living, speaking person, but also a ship. Um, there's a whole underlying plot of dragons and elderlings and the history of this world appearing to be somewhat cyclical. Um, and I'm just excited to see where this goes. There's still so much that we need to learn and we're at a point where we know certain things that certain characters don't necessarily know because we've followed different groups of people in different places in this world and it's just, it's really complex, really well created and I am super curious to see what happens in this one, what happens with these characters, why we're back with them, what happens next. Um, but I don't know the answer to that yet, so I cannot summarise this one. But super excited to dive back into this world because I've grown to love it so much. Um, and this one actually is smaller for a hob. I mean, it's still chunky. It's still nearly 600 pages. 
but for a hob, nearly 600 pages rather than nearly 900 pages is a decent size, so I'm looking forward to diving into this one. Roll number five. Four. One, two, three, four. Orange. One, two, three, four. Or purple. Do I make Maddie pick again or no, I go for adult. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Find something suggested by the viewers. Uh, and a purple pie in there. Next up, roll number five, we've got an adult fantasy again, and this time, can you find something suggested by the viewers? Now, am I bending this ever so slightly? Perhaps, but also not, because this has been recommended to me by so many people, and whenever we mention this author, this book comes up, um, and that is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I am desperate to read this, and whenever any sort of conversation around Brandon Sanderson comes up, and the question is always, where do you start with Brandon Sanderson? People always say either Elantris or The Final Empire. I have now read The Final Empire, um, I've read the Mistborn trilogy, um, and now I'm kind of backtracking back to this one, because I want to make sure I've read everything in a particular order to get to where I want to get to with Brandon Sanderson's books, um, and this is next in my particular order. Um, I'm very much leaning on Cody from Cody's Book Corner to get my order of books. Um, whenever I finish one, I'm just like, Cody, where do I go? <laughs> and this is next for me. This one is currently a standalone for Brandon Sanderson, but I don't know if it's going to be a standalone forever or if there is plans for this to continue. Um, but this one is about a princess, I believe. Um, Elantris was a place of glory. Um, it was home to people transformed into magic using demigods. Uh, but the magic failed and Elantris started to rot. Its inhabitants became powerless and weak. In the new capital city, close enough to Elantris to remind everybody what they've lost, a princess arrives ready to seal a political alliance with a wedding and unite the people against religious imperialists. But her husband-to-be is dead, still determined to fight for the freedom. Um, Serene clashes with the high priest, um, but secrets remain. The dead and the ruined may yet have a role to play in this new world because magic still lives. So... This princess, who was supposed to be like this political piece in a marriage to unite these people, ends up being and doing so much more by the sounds of this. But that last line of it, the dead and the ruined may yet have a role to play in this new world, really fascinates me. I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to see how this magic is going to be unearthed. And this princess character sounds pretty cool to me. Um, so I'm excited to dive into this and I'm actually going to be buddy reading this with Aaron from Booked and Busy this month as well. Um, so super double excited to uh, be diving into Elantris and be buddy reading it with Aaron. And lastly, roll number six. Pie. I don't have any punishments, so we can ignore that. Five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Wow, sci-fi or sci-fi? So I guess we're going for sci-fi. It's nearly a full pie of every colour. Sci-fi, yellow, a book that I know nothing about. That is a lot of books that I know nothing about. Let's see what we can come up with for that. But a yellow pie in there. Lovely. And then finally, roll number six, we have a sci-fi and the prompt is, what sci-fi do you know nothing about? Um, I have taken the opportunity here to get a comic in because a sci-fi comic that I have, purely because I think it's beautiful but I know very little about, is Low, um, The Delirium of Hope. I just think the cover of this is gorgeous. I think the art within it um, I want to find a decent, like, double page spread here, or this one will do. But, like, the art just looks really pretty to me. It's all, like, underwater, but I really don't know much about this at all. Having a flick through it looks actually incredibly violent. It's a futuristic sci-fi. I think the earth is like all underwater at this point. Oh, okay. So water hasn't risen. Humanity has sunk. Um, the sun's premature expansion has irradiated Earth, sending humanity to the lowest depths of the sea, hidden within radiation shield cities. There we go. That's why it's all underwater. Um, but the whole point of this prompt is for me to not know anything about it, so I'm not going to know anything more than that. Um, but we'll see what I think of this. I just think the art style is really intriguing. The fact that it's all underwater is intriguing. But as I say, having a flick through, it does look incredibly violent. We'll see what comes of that. Oh, just look at that, though. 
it's it's just so pretty. Anyway, there we go. There's roll number six, my sci-fi and a comic because I've got some chunky books on here. And there we have it. That is April's TBR Pursuit. They are my rolls and my book picks. I've got this stack here plus a hundred page novella for Fireheart Tiger, but we have chunky, chunky, chunky. Um, middle grade which I can get through pretty quickly and a comic which I should be able to get through pretty quickly. So this is fine. This is great. However, are you noticing something I haven't been able to get onto this one? The same thing happened last month. Um, that is Wind Witch by Susan Dennett because I will need to read Wind Witch ahead of the Wind Witch live show for the Witch Lands Along. Here it is, Wind Witch by Susan Dennard um, for the Witch Lands Along. The April book is Wind Witch with the live show being early in May. So I will need to get to this one at some point in the month as well. So if we add that on top, it then makes it this stack plus the uh, novella there as well. Is it manageable? Probably. I can do this. I reckon I can do this. I might have to get the help of um, audiobooks for sure, but I've got this. I'll be fine. <laughs> April is however going to be a really busy month for me, so we'll see. Hopefully um, Raidathon can help me with getting through something here, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there we go. There we have April's TBR Pursuit. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, give us a thumbs up, chat to me down below. Let me know if you've read any of these, what you think of them, and of course keep it spoiler free. Um, if you, however, don't have a comment necessarily to leave, but just want to let me know you were here, as always, just drop a little dice emoji. But yeah, thanks so much for hanging out with me for a bit today, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!